Jose or Keaty tipping pitches. Well, you know what? He's set to have a good year. And who's batting fifth? I think the guy that we want to have a comeback season, a hot start in Jose Abreu. Let's talk about this and so much more. Hey, Yiner, tell us about Locked on Astros. Yiner Diaz, this is Locked on Astros. to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on X at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Make sure you go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Go and check us out. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. That's right. Uh, go make every moment more. New customers join today, and you'll get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today and go and subscribe to us on YouTube, please. Brett, where can I find you at? Thank you. Find me at HTML House on X, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank you. Find me at Stroh's 411 on X, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Always Stroh's. Eric, this is a great day for us here at Locked on Astros. Why? Because we had another day of baseball. And whether it's a win or a loss, it's baseball and baseball season is here and it is the most wonderful time of the year. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about how the Astros starters are really off to a strong start, even though they're only going in a couple innings, they're hitting the strike zone, they're getting swings and misses. Um, you know, JV is ramping it up. I actually saw our friend win, um, you know, he goes by Ags win on Instagram filming JV throwing on, on, on flat ground. We're going to talk about the batting order. And just some different things about Blake Snell's um, location where he might be. But Eric, let's talk about it. These starters starting off strong. I think this is a really good start for us. And we'll get to JV later. But what do you think about our guys on the mound so far? Well, granted, I know some of these will not be in the starting rotation. A lot of it depends on what happens with Justin Verlander, and we'll get to that in a second. But like Joe Spada says, we're running uh, time is short. If we're going to ramp up uh, Verlander, we need to see what we can get out of him now. But Ronel Blanco, two shutout innings, two strikeouts. Hunter Brown, two shutout innings, two strikeouts. Spence Arigetti, two shutout innings, three strikeouts. And today, Jose Arikitti with two shutout innings, two strikeouts. So, I mean, it wasn't, uh, they both, they all allowed at least one or two hits, but for the most part, uh, they, they had pretty good control. I think Urquidy walked a couple of batters, but, uh, what we, we're going to talk about Arigetti in a little bit, but he, he has opened some eyes during the spring training and that's what you're supposed to do as a young player. You're supposed to come to camp and <clears throat> pitch, not get injured. <laughs> and actually um, play and everything. So uh, that's what we have uh, We have in this situation. We have uh, Spencer Arigetti just coming. He's the number three prospect out there. And he threw 22 pitches, 32 for strikes. He had a 92.7 mile per hour fastball. He had six whiffs on 17 swings. So, yeah, I know some of these guys will not be on the rot- in the rotation opening day. But somebody who will be in a rotation opening day is Jose Arquiti. And he had some issues last year. I know he dealt with some uh, shoulder issues that led to the IL, but also he struggled a little bit. But he was lights out in the playoffs like we've seen in the past. And uh, a lot of us was like, where has this guy been all year? And we were like, okay, well, he in the playoffs, he can um, maybe fine tune it. He can uh, maybe put in a different gear. But there's another reason. Go and tell us about this different reason. Well, because he was basically told by the pitching staff and they talked about it, that they felt like he was possibly tipping pitches that that maybe, um, you know, Jose Arquiti played with the pitch clock in the division series against the Twins. Um, the right hander just seemed to really he waited until the timer's final seconds to step on the rubber, almost seeming to walk into his pitching motion and maybe they thought that was it, but they really thought that it was something as subtle as what Urquidy said. He said, sometimes with the glove, squeezing the glove and doing different movements. And it's something that I'm fixing right now in this off season too. It's interesting how much pitchers are studied by opposing teams right. 
because it could be something as subtle as if a guy's throwing a curve and trying to, of course, I think the guys have learned not to mess with the, with the baseball in their glove. I mean, go watch a little league game this year and go right. pay attention to the kid that throws curveballs at 14. And you'll tell he's getting the ball lined up. Right. You'll tell when he has the fastball. Right. And, and so I think it's good for them. And I think it's important because Jose Arquiti has been the talk, Eric of trade rumors for the last couple seasons. And he does have the best winning percentage in a world series by any international pitcher in major league history. And he is a finesse pitcher. He throws strikes. He doesn't throw with heat, but his 92, 93 mile an hour fastball can look 97, 98. Right. If he can get this figured out with the injuries of McCullers and Garcia and waiting on them to come into through half the season, I don't know what that was. Um, it is inter- it, it will be key for Rikidi to come in and make a difference early on. I do want to clarify something. He actually made that adjustment in that uh, series uh, versus Carlos Correa and Christian Vasquez okay. because he uh, people told him he was tipping. So okay. he was literally yeah. just walking up to the mound and just throwing just to just to uh, so he wouldn't be tipping. And so that was him trying to make that adjustment. But he's been working this offseason on his stuff, his location. He f- feels like he's making good location. Physically, he feels pretty good. He's been working on his shoulder. So he's not going to have the same issues that he had last year. So uh, definitely he's. He's got a spot in rotation, especially now with uh, McCullers not likely come back and Luis Garcia not likely come back until midseason. So um, I know that uh, he spent all offseason just not only working on fixing the tipping, fixing his command, because his command is what his, is his his ride and die, so to speak. And so right. he didn't have that last year. And a lot of that had to do with his health. So um He's he also worked on his health. So I think Jose Arquiti has done everything he can do. And if he can uh, become that pitcher that he was in the 2022 season and before that, I think that this could be a big lift to the Astros organization as a whole. And uh, this rotation could be one of the best in baseball if this guy could uh, be all he says he can be. Speaking of uh, yeah. all they could be, JV, is he going to be all he can be by opening day? You know, Justin Verlander would like to be all he can be opening day, but I know the other day he did say that, well, I don't really have a timeline. I don't really know um, what is going to be happening. I mean, look, look, Eric, he's not going to rush it. Um, I don't think he knows. I don't think the, I, it's literally a day-to-day thing. And one of the things I talked about, talked with Mike Stanton about was, and I asked him, this is one of those things where when Justin Verlander gets up the first question, Joe Espada wants to do is go to Justin Verlander. How are you feeling, big guy? You know what I'm saying? And so right. he said, that's exactly it. And with Justin Verlander's veteran, with his with his veteran presence, with his knowledge, um, he's not going to try to rush it. And he said, I've got the trainers to rein, to rein me back in. Because right. remember when he was injured and he was said, I'm going to come back and I'm going to be ready and I'm going to pitch in the playoffs. And remember he, when he didn't? Yeah, You know, so he knows his body, I think, now better than ever to the Astros advantage. So um, according to uh, Joe Spada, uh, he said we got to make some decisions pretty soon. So the bullpen will determine what's next. And they have decided that the goal for tomorrow's bullpen with Justin Verlander is he's going to ramp up the intensity. So right now he has just kind of been um, throwing some fastballs, just kind of getting loose and not trying to um, strain anything or hurt anything because he's not in discomfort, but he just feels like he's uh, two days or two weeks behind. So he's trying to, they're trying to see where he's at. And if he's really still far behind, if he's not able to intensify his bullpen and get to a part where Maybe he's not going to be ready for opening day. They need to make that decision. Be like, okay, let's go ahead and slow play this. We uh, let's count out Justin Verlander maybe for April. Let's just go ahead and slow play it. And oh man, you're talking about really play. slow playing it. Wow, I was I was thinking a week. So you're saying, so Eric, what you're saying is maybe wait until May until we see Justin Verlander. Yeah. Be- is it because we have so many games? 
Um, I think it's because the Astros uh, have the ability to stretch out the pitchers right now. Okay. You, you're going to have a lot of options. Uh, you have Ronel Blanco. You're going to have Brandon Belak, who's out of options. So you're going to have to uh, give him a shot. And then you're going to have to uh, see. But I mean, I'm not saying the whole month, but I just don't push him. If he's the bullpen tomorrow, if he feels some soreness, if he feels any type of discomfort, then just got, kind of just dial it back and just say, okay, let's, we need you for October. We don't need you to be out the rest of the year. We need you in the, the postseason. So here's the thing. Um, Steve, Steve and Hassel is asking, are the bats still sleeping? Well, I don't know if they're sleeping. I mean, look, it's, it's like, we're like four or five games into spring training. I wouldn't read much into the one and four record, but yeah. I can tell you what we can count on is Fanduel. All right, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's correct. Get buckets with your first bet with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. That's 150 bucks if your $5 bet wins. Did you hear what I said? Don't tell FanDuel that doesn't make sense for them, but it makes sense for you. So check it out today. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. And visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Why? Because FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Hey guys, thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Go and check out the Locked on Astros podcast, but go and check out Locked on Sports Today. It's the first 24-7 streaming uh, channel out there. It's got all the sports news you need to know, and it's going to be on your uh, streaming devices as well, uh, the, your Amazon Fire Stick as well. So go and check it out. Um, every day they pick up uh, one of the MLB teams. So hopefully, fingers crossed, Brett and I will be on there as well. So go check it out. Locked on Sports Today, live 24-7, just for you. All right, so Brett, uh, let's go ahead and uh, you you want to close off your thought, but uh, JV, I, I think it's best not to rush him if he's really not in a place where he's going to be ready for opening day or even the first week of April. You still need to stretch him out, give him some games, but at the same time, yeah, let's, let's let some of the other guys get some innings. Well, yeah, definitely, and I believe when we went to commercial, we were talking about the – the at bats and the record and not getting too excited. Uh, Mike Stanton really hit on that. And look, they are not concerned as much with the production of the offense. As far as getting hits, it's when the bat hits the ball, what's the exit velocity, right. um, where are they connecting? Are they hitting opposite field? Are they late? Are they early? Pedro Leone apparently hit a moonshot in the ninth inning. I just looked it up. He hit a home run. Um, and, Jordan Alvarez got a hit today. You actually had several Astros get a hit despite losing 10 to three. Alvarez one for two. Tucker one for two. Corona, Kennedy Corona. Um, y'all need to be thinking about him. This this kid's a stud. Um, he's he's an absolute monster muscle wise. Jose Bray was one for one. Palma was one for two. Um, Leon was one for two. One of the things um, that, that I want to talk about when we get to Eric Getty is remind me to mention about the Cesar Salazar comment. I'm actually going to post that tonight. Um, after the show tonight, about 9.39.45, I'm going to share with you all some sights and sounds from spring training, words from Joe Espada and Spencer Eric Getty. So you'll have to stop on and watch. It's about it's about a 15-minute episode. I think you all will like it. I love the fact that uh, Jose uh, Altuve is out there with dirt on his pants. And when he was mm -hmm. asked about the dirt, uh, getting dirty during spring training, he's like, hey, I'm just trying to make the team. And that that's just who he is. He's just going to be out there. He's doing all the drills that everybody else is doing. And he, yes, he made an error in the game today, but I'm not going to be too worried about that. But yeah, Pedro Leon was one of those can't miss international prospects. And his uh, injuries, um, the strikeouts, a lot of stuff has kind of held him back. But um, maybe he is part of the future and we'll see what happens um, in the future. But this was a good sign that uh, maybe he can open some eyes to spring training because a lot of people have passed him by. And so we'll see what happens. But uh, this spring training is basically um, a 
kind of a audition for a lot of players, but somebody who's not auditioning for that is Jose Abreu. Jose Abreu is a veteran. He's a guy that a lot of people all year last year were like, Dusty, why is he still batting fourth and fifth in your lineup? Uh, and then finally Baker dropped him down after he kind of um, limited his, I mean, you realize that he was struggling a little bit, but this year um, after, especially after the late season success, they, they realized that the back injuries had a lot to do with the struggles. Joe Spada said, you know what? Uh, we still believe in you and we feel that uh, you're going to be a big part of this team. We have this big mega order. We're going to put Altuve, then uh, Alvarez, then we're going to have Bregman and Tucker. I want Abreu hitting fifth. He is mm. my guy to hit fifth. And so on paper, on uh, pencil on paper right now, that's uh, what's going to happen. So what, do you, what are your thoughts? So, yeah, well, you've got one former, you got two former MVPs in the top six. You've got a runner up number two, or I'm sorry, number three, you've got a future MVP, I think, in Jordan Alvarez and probably a future MVP. Eric, you have the potential. If all these guys get their shot at being MVP, which I think like the probability of that seems really, really astronomically that it won't happen. Right. How many guys have a one through six where they have six former MVPs, right? But they all have that potential. There's not many teams in baseball and I, I just, I'm sorry, Mookie Betts. I know you think that playing the Dodgers is everybody's World Series. But until you, well, I guess he did win one in Boston, but they cheated. Anyways, I digress. Um, you know, the Dodgers have never beat us in a World Series, the one we played. Yes. Um, and so until Mookie Betts and the Dodgers and the entire gang there in LA gets to the World Series and beats the Astros, I don't want to hear about that because this team, is like playing a World Series game every single day because top to bottom, I don't care if it's Jake Myers. I don't care if you don't believe in Jake Myers. He is on this team and he is protected because if you don't pitch to him, you got to get to somebody else eventually. And if Myers is ninth, you know what you got to do? You got to get to Jose Altuve. So maybe it's not a bad thing to put Myers ninth because then he's got protection of Altuve behind him. So mm -hmm. we could, we've could we got a Swiss Army knife in Mauricio Dubon. He is a bat. He is a walking hit. And so I really like... Um, David said, how did Boston cheat? David, go look it up to the, um, go look up the dugout attendant, the Apple watches, go look it up. The 2018 world series. They absolutely cheated. The dude got fired for it. Come on, dude. Don't act like you didn't know David price and Mookie Betts Both were on that team. Those jokers cheated. That's why, that's why Cora was suspended for an entire year. So go look it up. Come on, man. Come on, David, David. All right. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, continuing his batting order talk. I know we already talked about Alvarez batting second, and we do like this, but Alvarez was asked about that. Uh, in today's game, he he batted second for the first time. He said, "If at first it felt a bit weird, but later on that ball that I hit a little bit harder, it felt good that I have some hits in the bat. And he says, I got to prepare for this mentally. I know that Bregman and Tucker, they're going to produce, so I got to get ready to run as well. But he said something that's uh, pretty insightful. He says that Altuve, I'll be hitting behind Altuve. Altuve is not your typical leadoff hitter. He's a guy that's hit third before. And so it's basically like I'm still hitting cleanup. I just got to get him home every time he gets on base. So we'll see. Yeah. So, so Sorry, David. David's like, hey, man, I was just asking. I didn't know. I thought, David, I thought you were like, oh. How did Boston cheat? I'm sorry. My bad, David. Um, I, I misunderstood your text. But yeah, trust me. I guess they're acting like because I've gotten that before. Wait, Boston cheated? So my bad, David. I stand corrected. Yeah. So uh, he said, um, uh, actually, when Alvarez got approached uh, this offseason by Espada, uh, he thought it was a joke. He said, you're going to bat me second, coach? Really? And he's like, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Then when they started getting closer to spring training, uh, Espada kept on mentioning, hey, I'm going to bat you second. Really? You're still talking about this? You you weren't just <laughs> – he didn't say this, but I can imagine him saying, you weren't just drunk when you said it the first time. But uh, I could just imagine the conversation. And then finally when he got to camp and he said, oh, you're being serious. Oh, so, yeah, let's do this. And so it's just something that it makes sense. You look around the league and all the, the – some of the uh, other teams, they have their best players hitting second. And by the way – Otani in his first at bat with the Dodgers struck out. 
it was all over tw- X today. And then, of course, once he hit his first home runs with the Dodgers, it was all over X as well. This is going to be I, the all showing oh, Atani so, year. So I think the most entertaining overreaction this year was when Otani took his first, what, 10 swings in the batting cage and uh-huh. he hit eight home runs or something. No, oh, yeah, 20, yeah. yeah, 20 swings and 10 home runs. I'm like, okay, guys, this is literally BP. This is literally a coach not even throwing from the full length of the rubber to the mound. Let's not overreact. So that's a classic overreact. So, hey, let's talk about game time. There's nothing to overreact with them. I'm excited to tell you guys about game time. I've used game time. I love game time. And if I don't have tickets or, or I haven't purchased tickets in advance, I'm like, you know what? I don't freak out. Why? Because game time's got me covered. The game time app, download it today. It's free and easy to use. Use a code to locked on for $20 off your first purchase. You shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets or planning months in advance. That's lame. That's like yesterday's news with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and the best price guaranteed. Game time takes a guesswork out of buying tickets. That's right. Last minute tickets, flash deals, and zone deals. Easy to buy tickets of every kind of event. It's not just baseball. It's basketball, football. It's concerts. It's comedy, theater, and so much more. With game time guarantee, this means you will always get the best price. If you find tickets that are in the same section and row that are cheaper, game time will credit your account $110, 110% the difference. Not $110. Don't misquote me on that. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but create the account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hey guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Go and check us out. But go ahead and check out Locked On Sports today. If you want to see the up-to-date news about what Shohei Itani is doing with the Dodgers, uh, where did he go out to eat? I don't know if they do that, but go and check out Locked On Sports today. It's 24-7 all the streaming channels out there from locked on, whether it's basketball, football, soccer, uh, hockey, rugby, whatever college sports, it's all out there just for you 24 seven. So go check them out. Locked on sports today. And someone goes, I wonder um, what kind of bobbleheads they're going to have this year. Are we going to get a Chaz one before we get a hater one? Have you seen the Chaz bobblehead that the Corpus Christi hooks are doing? No. Um, so there is a bobblehead where it's a wall and it has Chaz leaning over the wall. And there's there's like this little sphere and you can yeah. tip it over. He he has the ball in his glove and you could because there was a catch that he made, I believe, where he jumped he made the catch and he fell over the wall and they made a bobblehead where the Chaz McCormick falls over the wall, catching the ball. It's really neat. Um, I, if I were y'all, I would get down to Corpus for that. Cause it looks like a cool bobblehead. I don't know. They haven't released all the bobbleheads. I think no. they released one of the Framber ones. I, I think Framber is the only one that I saw, but I'm pretty sure they'll have some really good ones this year. Um, and to answer a question from earlier, I don't know about Ryan Stanek. Um, I was really hoping the Astros would resign him. I have not heard any movement on the market for him. I don't know if you've heard anything. Um, last time I reached out to him, I just know that he said the Astros had not contacted him, but I don't know of any other teams talking to him at this point. I had heard Boston and Chicago, but have not heard anything yet. If I get an update on him, I'll let y'all know soon. Yeah, I just don't um, know if the Astros would have any, uh, too much interest um, at this point, unless there's. I think an they have a plethora of arms, right? Yeah. I, I think they have almost too many people, and I think maybe they feel like they got the most out of Stanek they could. But I think Stanek is valuable, and wherever he lands, I think he's going to contribute um, in a solid way. It's a good dude. I'm going to miss right. having him in Houston. Like somebody said in the chat, uh, Dylan Coleman, he gave up five runs today, but uh, his stuff looks electric. So yeah. uh, you can't read too much into what goes on during spring training. Somebody like Coleman, he's looking to win a job, but uh, you can't really look too much into that. So then you have a lot of names in today's bullpen that really are probably not going to be on the squad um, at all this year. So 
uh, it's that's the joy of spring training. It, you don't know who these people are. It's to get a glimpse of the future, see who's out there. And but the lineups, uh, we we saw Bryce Matthews this weekend. Uh, we saw um, Spencer Arigetti this weekend and Spencer Arigetti uh, opened some eyes. And like we already kind of talked about it, but um, there's uh, the front office is actually really excited about it. Um, uh, one, it, I think uh, Jacob, Jacob uh, Bufa, he's the Astro senior director of player development. He says that uh, one thing that he wants uh, Arigetti to work on is his fastball, his cutter as cur- and his curveball as pitches that he would like him to master in order for him to become more consistent and maybe not walk as many batters but he's become a dominant pitcher uh he did struggle a little bit in triple a he posted a 4.64 era but he looked pretty good and uh josh miller said that uh in uh i think it was sunday's game he was mixing all his pitches well he was attacking his own with all of them we'll stretch him out and get him on the starter schedule Uh, He's already fit in here with the group and is doing well. We'll keep that going. So um, he already added a, um, I believe he added a slider, uh, a cutter in the middle of season last year to help get out lefties. So this is a young kid that knows how to uh, make the adjustments on the fly. He does, you know, Spencer Getty. I I do want y'all to come back later on. I'm assuming 939 45 is is, is when it's going to post but he talks about using his pitches and, and I'll kind of set up, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say what he said in the interview, but I'll set it up with what I, what Mike Stanton and I talked about is pitching is about pitching efficiency. And the way you become an efficient pitcher is you, is you get your fastball, your two seam and your four seam working, missing bats, filling the zone. And once you can establish your two seam and your four seam fastball, you can bring the other stuff. He has a change up in his arsenal, but he said, my goal is to get to hitters early so that I can get them out on my other pitches. That's what you do. You use the fastball to set them up to then throw the curve or slider or change up whatever that pitcher has in their arsenal. So pitching efficiency is what Spencer Arigetti needs to work on. He has a lot of the same kind of command issues that Hunter Brown had. He can throw for high velocity. He can throw the fastball. It's keeping that in the zone. And again, getting those O2 counts. And once he can, once he can get those O2 counts, then Spencer Arigetti, the key for pitchers is to get outs. The key for pitchers is not to strike out a batter. The key for the pitcher is to get out. And you, you, how do you do that? You throw strikes. So I'm excited. I'm excited about that. So uh, prospects across baseball, when they're on a team that has somebody entrenched at a position, like maybe second base with Jose Altuve, third base. Well, maybe not so much with uh, Alex Bregman there, but you have somebody like Will Wagner. Um, He's getting some looks to spring training, maybe at first base. So uh, I know he plays mostly second and third base. Uh, We don't know the future of Alex Bregman. So Will Wagner could be somebody that gets some looks at third base down the road, but they're also after uh, Jose Abreu, who are their options out there for first base. So the Astros, what they're trying to do is, uh, looked, I know, uh, Lo Profito plays first, right? Or he's, he, no, he's outfielder. No, he's, no, he's mainly a right fielder. Not fielder. First. Um, uh, there's just not a lot of uh, first base talent off, off top uh, my Jordan, head. Jordan, Jordan Brewer played first today, but I don't, okay. I don't see, I mean, I love Jordan Brewer. Great kid. Um, interviewed him on the show, right? but I don't, I don't see him breaking the roster this year. Um, you know, he's going to be one of those guys that like fills in, in the minor leagues, but, um, you know, look, I don't, to me, first base isn't that big of a concern because first base is a position that I think you can adjust someone to a lot easier than a third base or shortstop. Second base is probably the easiest transition, um, you know, position on the field from, from pretty much anywhere. That's why, that's why you see guys like Mookie, but look, Bryce Harper, Bryce Harper is now moving to first and Bryce Harper wants Philadelphia to keep spending money. And so that's, that's why you, you see these outfielders going to the infield. So it might be like a Jordan Alvarez. I, I just don't think with this history and his knees and stuff that you that you put him at first base, but they'll find someone. Look, it may be Melton. I mean, Melton's a big body. He's a, he's, right. a, he's a tall dude. Maybe he fits at first. Um, who knows? If you hit, they'll find a place for you to play. Oh, we found yeah. out with Alex Bregman. He was a shortstop, and they're like, uh, we have Carlos Correa. What are we going to do with him? So they moved him to third base. And well, they have. Weird. They have Desenzo. Desenzo can crush the ball. Corona can crush the ball. I mean, look, 
they aren't right now toying with anybody as a utility because Chandler Rome did ask a spot of the other day. He's like, um, remember when y'all had Miles Straw playing second? Any of that? He goes, nope, we don't have that right now. But when they go to the minors, I promise you they'll be playing varying positions. Yeah, uh, that's that's part of the minor leagues is to figure out uh, like what position are you? Can you play multiple positions? All that. Exactly. So uh, from Valdez will make his uh, great few. Grapefruit League debut Friday against the, the Nationals. And then Christian Javier will debut on Saturday. And you'll see some of the big time relievers also uh, make some uh, their debuts this weekend, including Ryan Presley, Josh Hader, and Brian Abreu at uh, sometime on Friday or Saturday. And, and hey, guys, real quick, if you guys are at the at the Astros Foundation College Baseball Classic, I will be covering the games for Locked on Astros. I'll be at all three games Friday. Um, I'll be in the press box. I may come down in between games. If you see me, say hi. Tell me you listen to Locked on Astros. I'd love to meet some of our listeners. Come out. It's cheap, like 1050 general admission, field box seats. LSU and UT, Eric, are playing the 7 the uh, seven o'clock or 730 game Friday night. So y'all come out to the ballpark. Come hang out with me. It's going to be fun. Uh, just real quick, buy, sell. Uh, don't even say anything else. Buy, sell. Blake Snell going to the Angels. I say I sell that. I don't think the Angels are going to do that. Uh, the Angels are going to have to pay a lot of money, and they're going to pay a lot of money to be the last, the fourth place team in the AOS. Artie Moreno is a terrible owner. He ranks up there with the A's owner. So that's a problem, man. I met an Angels fan this weekend, bro. This guy, Dylan, was like, Artie Moreno is the worst. So sorry. Yeah. So, guys, that's all we got for this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. He's Brett Chancy. We are Locked on Astros podcast, your only daily Astros podcast out there. Go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Go and make us your first listen, and we'll see you tomorrow. What's going on?